And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. The awful green things from outer space is not a new game. In fact, if I recall correctly, and I probably aren't recalling, but I'm pretty sure it was originally came out in a magazine. Then it was published as a very cheap version of the game where you had to cut out all the counters and everything. And it was a funny little game, but the component quality and everything, and I hate games that you have to carry around in an envelope, basically. Well, now Steve Jackson has done an absolutely tremendous job with this new production. I mean, really nice. Definitely in running for one of the reprints of the year. What is this game? It's a two-player game, which is a hilarious little game in which one player is playing the crew of a ship that's being invaded by aliens. Now think BBB movie here, C movie, where these, wow, these goomy, glimy, grabby, grooby aliens get on board ship and everyone's trying to fight them off, but you don't know what will kill them. I'll jab them with this. Whoa, that made it grow. Bad idea. And so that's the theme of the game. And underneath that, it's a light little war game. Let's look at it. say that I really like how this whole thing has this campy feel to it from the title the rule book has comics in the front of it now the rule book looks awfully complicated but the game itself is not it, it, I, I don't know how to explain it it almost has the feel of a war game in a sense but it's really light don't let this look like a complicated mess and I'm telling you the fact that it's not on paper anymore has made a huge difference I don't know how to explain it uh, now, I'm going to have a difficult time maybe comparing it to the other game because it's been a while since I played the original one. But here's a sample starting setup. The, the good guy or the, the aliens who are on the ship, the, the good guys, they have different characters that they're placed throughout the ship. Each character has one or two spots that they can start in. So there's a myriad of different ways to set it up. And the aliens, they roll a die to see where they first set up. But after that, they kind of spread out. But each, each creature, this is their constitution, that's a number that you have to roll higher than to kill them. This is how far they can move. And down here is how many dice they can roll. So you can see this tech, he's terrible at rolling dice, but at least he's fast. So you have all these creatures all over the ship, and a round is basically going to be moving and attacking. However, they, there's a few things that are going to be different. The alien, for example, can pick any one thing each turn which will grow. So let's say it's the first turn, I would say eggs, because I have four alien eggs on the board. There is four different sections of aliens. Let me show them to you. Four aliens. We have the adult aliens, which are slow but pretty strong. They roll four dice. We have the baby aliens. Then we have the eggs. And then we have fragments, okay, because there's a chance that these would get into fragments. So I pick one of them. So I, let's say I pick the eggs. So I take every egg on the board, and I change those eggs into baby aliens. Now, if I had, if I had picked uh, the fragments, all the fragments would change into an egg. If I had picked all the babies, all the babies would change into adults. And if I picked all the adults, then all the adults would lay an egg. So you can see how this can be annoying for the player playing the good guys, because... Uh, you know, the, these aliens keep multiplying. Then the aliens move, then the humans move, and there's fighting and such. I'm not going to get into all the details, but if you notice, there's a lot of different spots in the board. Let's take a closer look here. You can see, for example, here in the machine shop, you can pick up the fire extinguisher and the blowtorch. So you would look through the pile of tokens that we have here next to the board until you found the correct thing. So in this instance, uh, I'll take the welding torch and I'm going to give it to the machinist here. Now, there's a certain amount of, of different equipment that you can get, but here's what's really neat about this game and what really makes it lots of fun is anytime you attack an alien with an equipment, you are going to be drawing from a pile randomly of effects. So once we draw one, so let's say, for example, I use that welding torch and I draw from this pile and I... I draw grow. From now on, every time I use that welding torch, it's going to make the alien grow. It's going to do it the first time too, which can be pretty annoying. Or even worse, 
one die of fragments. Let's say I try to stun pistol out, and that I, the alien dies, but it rolls one d6, and that's how many fragments go into the quarter. I'm looking for tokens like this. For example, the can of rocket fuel will do four dice to kill, maybe. Or the pull stick will do four dice to stun. Notice that every creature here has a stun side. The aliens won't move, and you basically lose your turn if you're the humans. And we got three dice to kill, and five dice to kill, and we got dice that will shrink. Uh, but the problem is, you have to watch, because there's several of these 1d6, or 1 die fragments, and then there's even no effect. What's that all about? Now, each of these weapons is handled differently. If it's a hand-to-hand, -hand, good. You know, some of them are weapons you throw, like the uh, a gas grenade. You would throw that one, and, and you find out, wow, that one's one that works. That's one I got the four dice to kill, but once I throw it, I have to go back to the workshop to grab another one. A few of them will even do damage to the crew, like rocket fuel and the gas grenade might stun you. The rocket fuel will do damage to the crew, man, who uses it. So every game is going to be different because you never know how a weapon goes. And when you use a weapon, you're using it. And you have to be careful because, you know, you walk in a room with full of aliens and you shoot the gun and it blows them all into fragments. That can be pretty annoying because now there's fragments everywhere. So what the good guys are trying to do is they're trying to get the aliens off the ship. The aliens are trying to kill all the crew members. It's pretty simple. Now, you can play a second section where the ship is disabled or where you can go on the outside of the ship and fight. They even brought in a few smaller ships that players can get into. And there's even like this choose-your-own-adventure style thing where you fought off the aliens and how to get home. And the crew escapes. But the awful green things can take over and they'll score points. But the crew can try to destroy them. Now the crew has a bunch of weaklings compared to the aliens. Except they do have this awesome robot. Look at his stamina there. 44. He's really slow. But man, he can just nail these guys to the wall. And there's also the mascot. Eh. So anyway, there's a lot of different options, and it's just a lot of little fun here as you go back and forth and fight over this spaceship. They're coming to get you, Barbara! I like this game! You know, I don't know what it is. I really like the original one, but I just was so put off by the components that I put an envelope. I hardly ever pulled it out. When I did get out, I'm like, oh, i got to flip all these little counters over. This is a really nice production, and I'm talking about Steve Jackson Games here. Good on you guys. You're really starting to up the levels here. I like it. Uh, I like that. I don't know why this kind of game isn't emulated more often. It has a great theme. The space, of course, you know, you guys know I love that theme. But just it's 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 funny space. It's it's ridiculous looking aliens fighting off the this horde of oozing stuff, and you never know what a weapon might do. And all that silliness and all that zaniness, there's actually real strategy. Do I load up on the weapons and go out, or do I got to get start killing these aliens off right away, or they're going to expand too quickly? The alien guy just like, Rrr! but got to be careful. Do I try to take out that robot? You eat the robot, and something weird will happen to the alien who eats them. Usually, if the if an alien eats a, a crew member, then pff, out comes another alien. Hilarious stuff, but I mean, there's a lot of good decisions to make, and at the same time, it's not mind-bendingly difficult. It's just fun. And the, the awful green things from outer space, I don't know if this will ever make my top 50 games or so, but it's a game that now that it's with these great production values, it's one that I'm just very fond of. I, I think that's the best word of this one. It, it's just a game that you look at and you just smile. It's entertaining. Uh, lots of silliness and zaniness mixed with strategy. It's, it's, it's one of those games that's just so unique and interesting that even if you're not going to buy it and, and pick it up, you owe it to yourself to try it out at least once. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.